Okay, praise God. So we began to look at a, a series last week. And like I said, it wasn't part of our calendar, but as uh, the times that we live in and the uh, removal of the subsidy and uh, just the shock that that was to many people, I sensed that God wanted us to go in this direction. And last week I looked at what we call the Goshen economy. The Goshen economy that we have a covenant of exemption that God has an economy for his people and uh, like I said at Goshen we looked at the children of Israel in Egypt that Goshen is not a physical uh, geographical location that it is a spiritual reality marked by the favor of God that you carry around that wherever you go you carry Goshen with you and so today I want us to begin to look at how to work the Goshen economy. So I'll be talking about uh, practical things that you can do to thrive in tough times. Thriving in tough times. And there was a man I spoke about, I think, in 2017 as we looked at the book of Ruth, Running with Ruth. We looked at a man called Boaz. And so today we'll be looking at the Boaz book of business. Boaz, the Boaz book of business business. This will speak to uh, business people. You have a small and medium enterprise. You're taking your business to the next level. It will speak to you. And also if you are an intrapreneur working somewhere, it will speak to you. Praise the name of the Lord. I said praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, children of God. Father, speak to our hearts this morning as we approach the perfect law of liberty. Precious Holy Spirit, I yield to you. I ask that you take uh, absolute control of this moment in the name of Jesus. Glorify Jesus. Release an anointing in this house right now to transform somebody's life, to bring them to the place of greatness, to release the mantle of authority, of dominion, and of greatness upon them in the name of Jesus. Let your word go forth with authority and with power, and let it make your people what they are meant to be in destiny in the name of Jesus. So much depends on me. I so much depend on you. Grant me the appropriate utterance to declare your oracles this morning in the name of Jesus. Be glorified, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. The Boaz book of business will be reading from the book of Ruth. The book of Ruth, chapter 1, and I'll start from verse 22. It's a bit of a lengthy reading. If you can follow in your Bible, it will be good. And I'll encourage you to read the whole book of, uh, of, of uh, Ruth. An amazing book, just four chapters. The book of Ruth, chapter 1, and I'll read from verse 22. So Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabites, her daughter-in-law with her, who returned from the country of Moab. Now they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. Barley harvest, verse 1, chapter 2. There was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth, of the family of Elimelech. His name was Boaz. So Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Please, let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him in whose sight I may find favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. Then she left and went ahead and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. Now, behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to his staff, the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his servant, who was in charge of the reapers, Whose young woman is this? So the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered and said, It is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. And she said, Please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and has continued from morning until now, though she rested a little in the house. Then Boaz said to Ruth, you will listen, my daughter, will you not? Do not go to glean in another field, nor go from here, but stay close by my young women. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap, and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. I'll jump to verse 14. Now Boaz said to her at mealtime, come here. And eat of the bread and dip your piece of bread in the vinegar. So she sat beside the reapers and he passed parched grain to her. And she ate and was satisfied and kept some back. And when she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves and do not reproach her. Also let grain from the bundles fall purposely for her. Leave it that she may glean and do not reproach rebuke her. 
So she gleaned in the field until evening and beat out what she had gleaned and it was about an ephah of barley. It was about a mudu, if you permit me to say, of barley. Glory be to God. I say glory be to God. Praise the name of the Lord. The Boaz book of business. Like I said, I said last week that we are Goshenites and that we have a, a, a divine economy that we operate underneath. Uh, but I, I also must let you know that we need to do some practical things to activate that economy. We need to do some realistic things to maintain economic buoyancy in, and, and thrive in an economic downturn. Now, I talked about this guy some time ago, and I'll be talking about him again, the man Boaz, who prospered in an economic downturn. Now, if you know anything about the book of Ruth, in the book of in, in chapter 1, the Bible says there was famine in the land of Bethlehem, and Elimelech carried his family and jackpot and went for greener pastures. And unfortunately for him, not like that will happen to everybody who jackpot, that unfortunately for him, he died in that land. The men that his daughters married also died. And so his wife returned a widow and came back with uh, one of the daughters-in-law, Ruth, who decided to come back with her broke. But something strange happened. This took them 10 years. And by the time they came back, they met a man called Elimelech, uh, sorry, Boaz, who did not leave that country. And the Bible says he was a man of great wealth. He was a man of substance. He was a man of riches. How did Boaz prosper in a land that many people gave up on? How did Boaz prosper in a time of economic downturn? And so I believe that Boaz had written a book. It is the book of Bo uh, the Boaz book of business. And so we'll be going into the book to see some of the things that he did to prosper in the time of economic uh, downturn or in the time of inflation. I believe the Holy Spirit will want us to spend time here in the coming uh, weeks after the men's Sunday next week and after our Thanksgiving, we will continue. So you don't want to miss it. I'll be talking about more practical things that you can do in times like this because I believe that it is possible to still make it in the times that we are in. Like I said last week, some people could not afford a car when it was just 800,000 Naira, but they bought one when it was 3.5. Some people will buy when it is 10 million and, and that's just how life operates. So you may zone yourself out but God is saying, no, don't zone yourself out. You can, this actually can be your time. Glory be to God. Say, this is my time. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. So what business wisdom did Boaz deploy to prosper in a time of economic collapse? So as we look into his book, the first thing I see in the first chapter is foresight is an asset. Foresight. Ability to see ahead. Ability to be positive. I believe that Boaz saw the end of the inflation, the end of the famine, the end of the economic downturn in view. He knew that tough times never lasted, but tough people do. Or tough people did. <laughs> so he knew that. That this will pass. And if you look at world history, you'll find out that there have been recessions. And people came out of it. The world came out of it. In fact, there was one called the Great Recession. But people bounce back. People have still prospered beyond that. So whatever is going on right now, we will get out of it. One way or the other, it will pass. Either we adjust and still prosper in spite of it, or things are reversed. But tough times never last. So don't zone out because, like I told them in the first year, I know for some young man who has been telling the girl, we will marry this year. The moment they just said that subsidy has been removed, just say, you know, girl, he didn't say subsidy is reason. He just said, uh, you know, uh, that's my wedding plan. I'm just thinking of putting some things together. Let's move it to like March 2025. And lie, it's subsidy that is making you do that. Tough times never last. So one of your assets this season is to be able to say, God, what are the opportunities in these challenging times, because people like Boaz understand that in challenging times, opportunities show up. In times of famine, opportunities show up. In times of financial difficulties, opportunities show up. So you need to begin to say to God, open my eyes and help me to see because there are. Otherwise, certain people won't be prospering when things are tough. In fact, that's when some people move from zero to hero. 
Not because they even had anything before, but they saw an opportunity. So foresight is your greatest asset in times like this. The ability to know that this will pass. Things will always be like this. How can I reposition myself to take advantage of this moment and to move beyond this moment? In fact, people are even better at foresight and I do that so I just go online and I begin to say to myself, what will be the jobs of the future? The, 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 the professions of the future, I do that sometimes. And I may tell us some of them in the course of this. What jobs will no longer be relevant in the future? So I ask questions like that because there are certain things we do now. With the advent of technology, they will not just be relevant again. So it is big, it's good to begin to think like that. Foresight is a great asset. In the book of Proverbs chapter 6, the Bible says, Go to the ant, you sluggard. He said, and learn from them. He said, although they have no overseer, overseer or captain, they provide their food in summer so they do not perish in winter. And, and what that basically means is that they have foresight. They are thinking ahead. And that's why, in fact, uh, uh, animal scientists or whatever will tell you that the ants are the most successful sets of animals on the face of the earth. It has been said that if all the human beings on the earth were removed from the face of the earth, the earth will still continue. But if you remove all the ants from the world, from the face of the earth, everything will collapse. Because sometimes you don't know what they do. They are responsible for 90%. I may be wrong on that. They are responsible for almost 90% of taking care of all decompositions. All the things that decay. Ants make sure that, you know, they just, they, they don't turn into epidemics and all of that. And they help with farming and mulching the ground. There's a lot they do. So the Bible says, go to them. It's foresight. It's seen that, yes, we are small. We don't have enough weight. In fact, we are so insignificant. But then the Bible says, they prosper. And I've taught on that before. I taught teenagers this. And the five things you notice about them. Number one, you notice hard work with ants. You never see an ant just lounging, sipping on a calypso. They are always moving around. And because they always move around, they get to a place where there's something sweet. They will find that sugar wherever it is. They will find it. They will find that bag of nuts wherever you keep it because they are always moving. So you notice hard work. Another thing you notice about them is teamwork, partnership, partnership that works. You notice and kill one housefly. And I used to do that as a kid. I'll kill a housefly and put it there. And then one ant is strolling, strolling, and then touches it. The housefly is not fully dead. I like them not to be fully dead and throws the uh, ant away and then comes. By the time you come back there in like five minutes, you will see like a thousand ants on that. Sometimes a whole cockroach. You just see these ants carrying it. Or they are pieces. The one is carrying the leg and taking it. Partnership. Partnership. Self-motivation. Another thing you notice about them. Self-motivation. The Bible says they have no overseer. Nobody say, you do this. You, have you ever seen anybody? You do that. You do this. You do that. No. Self-motivation. They tell themselves, we need to wake up and do this. We need to do this so that we don't, so that we survive. So that this business will thrive. Don't wait for anybody to start telling you, you know, you need to do this. You need, no, tell yourself. Foresight. Planning. So the next thing is, the next thing is foresight, which I already spoke about. And I can't remember the last one. Uh, there are five of them. So hard work, teamwork, uh, self-motivation, foresight and planning. And there's one other thing which I can't remember. It's not part of my message, but it's Jara. And no, no I already talked about it. That's the teamwork. Uh, there's partnership. I'll rem if I remember, I'll say it. If I don't, it doesn't matter. It's not part of this message. I guess that was just for somebody. So foresight is your greatest asset. Number two, maintain good communication and relationships. So that's another thing I see in chapter two of Boaz's book of business. Good communication and, uh, and, and relationships with your staff, with your partners, with your customers, it is important. It has been said that your network is your net worth, or your net worth is your network. And so you want to ensure that uh, uh, you have good relationship with people. Because sometimes people will patronize you not because of what you can do sometimes, but because you are the one that is uppermost on their heart. They remember you. You call them yesterday. You send them a message. You are on, they, they, they feel like they are on your mind. So you look at Boaz here. The Bible says with his staff, it will ask them, how are you guys doing? The, the Lord be with you. He, he, he was communicating with them. He carried them along. He may have cut salaries. I don't, the Bible doesn't, doesn't say that. He may have cut salaries, but there was something he did that boosted their morale. It was him being there with them. 
It was him talking with them. It was him speaking blessings over them. It was him carrying them along. And they stayed with him through that tough time. So I can extrapolate that and say such a person will also ensure that he keeps his customers, uh, he, he, he keeps in touch with his customers, uh, with his clients, and check up on them. How are you finding these times? We'll get out of it. We wanted to know we value your partnership or we value your patronage. Uh, we appreciate uh, your being, uh, your, 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 your doing business with us and all of that. Uh, this is also the time that uh, as a business, uh, so I used this example in the first service. So maybe you are a fashion person. This is the time that, um, of course, people may not be buying as much, but then start doing something weekly. You can just do fashion tips. And what you are sending to them on social media or on your WhatsApp group for them is how to uh, maintain your clothes and let it last longer. How to, you know, mix and match. How to combine colors. And you are creating value. At that time, they may not be paying you for it, but you are saying something to them. They are always, they are, they are saying that this person is important or we are important to this person. And when times get better and they want to buy, guess where they will come to? If you have an eatery or a restaurant, it may also be the same thing. Just say, uh, how to make or has soup and send a, a, a recipe a week to just help people. And you are helping them how to cut down. You can, you know, you can make an uh, ogbono. Well, I'm looking for oh, Ophel Nugu. Mommy, I think you're owing me Ophel Nugu soup. Yes. Kelechi's mom. Ophel Nugu, you <laughs> how to make Ophel Nugu with 5,000 naira. Just something like that that can get people's attention and you push it out like that. Uh, you are doing healthy drinks. You can just say to stay healthy, drink this, combine this. And like that, you're just pushing those things out. In times like this, you are communicating with your clients and your customers and they stay on you stay on their minds so that if they need anything, you are the one that they will come to. Maintain good relationship. Maintain uh, uh, contact. Communicate with them in times like this. That is what I see in the chapter 2 of Boaz's book of business. Number 3, chapter number 3. The chapter is titled, Habitually Keep Reserves. Habitually Keep Reserves. Boaz must have kept grains for eating and for sowing for the future. And that's why he could run his business with those. In the times of famine, at this time, people were living, things were tough. But the man had enough to keep his staff on board, to keep his business running, to prosper. That means the man was in the habit of always keeping. I don't care if it's a business, let your business save money. Let your business save money. If you open your business account now, don't say, well, we don't have money there because we just used it to put, we put it, we just bought a new equipment or we just did it and did that. No, there should always be savings. So be in the habit of always keeping something aside for your business because sometimes a windstorm has come sometimes and swept some businesses off. And you know what? With what's happening right now, some businesses will go under. Same happens with churches. Some churches have gone under. Not because they are not anointed, not because they are not called of God, but because of some of these little, little things. Keep something aside all the time. It helps you to wade through the difficult times. Keep something aside. And that's what you can now use to invest. That also gives you the opportunity sometimes to take advantage of unbelievable opportunities that may show up. Because in times like this, that people are times like some people will offload because they need liquidity, they need cash, and that's when you may get something of one million naira at six hundred thousand naira. Then you'll be able to take advantage of that. Also, individually, always put something aside. Have an individual savings, and the objective is for investment down the road. And maybe later in the series, we'll tell you some things that you may begin to consider. But it's always important. I'm only a pastor. Ask a financial expert, and they will tell you. But I'm giving you the the basics so that you begin to think like that. Keep something aside. Don't say you know you I only earn hundred thousand naira, and so it's difficult to save. It could have been 80,000 naira. You've heard me say that before. And you won't take a gun to your organization's head and say, increase it now, increase it now. So just pretend that it is 80,000 naira and find a way to live around it and keep putting aside. And I told them this in the first service uh, that my late pastor Ina taught uh, us a long time ago and, and, and I never forgot it. He said that... Um, and we, just, we actually told them in our married class, we just finished our rock solid class, 11 week uh, Amazing class, awesome couples, glory be to God. Amen. If you are not jealous, clap now. Yeah, so 
So he said, your savings may never buy you a car. And truly, how many 55,000 naira do you want to save to buy a 7 million naira car? You'll be like that, my friend of last week. My friend, he won't come buy fan every time he nearly buy the fan. It will just be difficult. Imagine how many 5,000 naira are in 7 million naira. Can somebody help me do that? Can, can you 7 million divided by 5,000? That would be 7,000 divided by 5. That would be like a 100 and I think 1,005. 1,000 what? 1,400 months of saving 5,000 every month <laughs> before you can buy a car. How many 20,000 naira do you want to save a month to be able to buy a house of 40 million naira, 50 million naira? So why save? And you know, for that reason, some people have decided not to save. You know, but my pastor said that your savings is not what will get you these things. That what your savings says to God and to the ether, to the universe, is that this one has conquered money. He can be, he has, he has been faithful in little. He can be trusted with more. And that's what it basically says. And that's when somebody will say, oh, there is a house for 40 million, but you can take it at 20 and you can pay over time. In fact, we heard a testimony in church. Somebody was given a house. So you now begin to see. So some of those things don't just happen. God, somebody will now say, a car that is about so social amount, take it. Or we'll give you a payment plan that is convenient for you. Things, because God has seen that this one is faithful. And you may not have noticed in that scripture, it doesn't say, he who is faithful in little will be faithful in much. Go and look at it. It says, he who is faithful in little is faithful in much. So for God, he's already, if he's there, it's, it can be, it's concluded that he's already faithful in much too. And so learn to put aside also for your business. Also for your business. This is also not the time to be doing capital intensive businesses. That you have to get like 10, 20 million to get something started. And then the profit on it will take like another 7, 10 years. So you need to be smart. And if that's the kind of business you have, do something that creates a cash cow for you. That can also begin to just bring something, something like what Bell is doing. Almost every day, something will come in. Even though the husband is an architect and he may be big capital intensive. Do find, find things like that. I know why I'm doing this today is to make all of us to think and to pray. So put something aside. Number four. Chapter number four. Cut down on personal luxury. Now, that is for different people at different levels. Uh, at this point, you know, this is uh, for dif different, different levels of people. So, but you know what that will mean for you. Cut down on personal luxury. Where did Boaz get this from? Uh, if, if you look uh, in that place, I think in chapter 3, which we didn't read, verse 7, when it was time in the night for him to sleep, the Bible says, Boaz, this very rich man, he went to the threshing floor at the head of the grain and he lay there overnight. And I'm like, this guy is so rich. He could have gone to an Airbnb for that night uh, or for the uh, harvest period or for the threshing season. He could have gone to an Airbnb. He could have rented a hotel. He could have built a big booth at that, you know, in the place at that time. But he also understood that in times like this, you want to cut down on personal luxury. There are certain things that you don't need now, that that money can be set aside to do other things or to push into an investment. And like I said, I'm telling you, there are some people that if they can just get 100,000 naira, if they can just get, we, we saw somebody recently that cooks food, and just 100,000, when they told us, Stella, right, when they told us what 100,000 naira can do in their shop, and then this person is cooking food in that neighborhood, and they sell to people at the motor park, and it will shock you what they make in a day. So that 100,000, I can just go into something. And, and, I, and I said this also in the first service, not at this point, but let me say it now. You know that there are monies right now. One of the things you also advise, well, not to, it's good. If and you're looking at assets, it's like if, they have, if, they are, if there's levels one, two, three, four, five. This is a level three. Non-performing assets. Non-performing or non-productive assets. So maybe like gold. So you have gold now. Yeah, when, when gold appreciates, your money appreciates. When dollar falls or whatever, and go, it appreciates. But it's not blessing anybody. It's not providing any job for anybody, true or false. You have gold in your house or in the, in the safe deposit somewhere. It's not improving anybody's life. And you know, that's where Nigerians have been reduced to. That's why you go to some estates. You just see five houses empty. Only witches and wizards and lizards are living in it. 
because somebody is tying money down. Meanwhile, that money could have gone to help somebody. But you know why? Because people can't find trustworthy people. Because, and in times like this, credibility will always invite credit to you. So there are people who rather keep their 50 million naira in the bank because they don't know if they can find a Nigerian that if they give 10 million, they can, or give 15 million, or give 5 million, or give the 50 million, they can get the returns, the promise. So in times like this, another thing you can trade with is integrity. Is integrity. Is credibility. Is your name. It's important in times like this. Praise the name of the Lord. So cut down on luxury. Certain things don't matter at this point in time. You are thinking of wading through the snow. You are thinking of school fees. You are thinking of essentials at this point in time. School fees, feeding the family, paying the children's school fees, making sure the house rent is paid, depending on how God has blessed you. Some people will still be able to travel, but at this point, some people will not need to travel. When I did the 20 for 20, my wife and I, I don't know if I've said this in church before, and uh, we had come to start church, so our, my income was, of course, not only dented, there was no income, really. So one of the things I've also done, uh, what, which is what I'm, I actually saved up a year's salary before I even came to do, before we came to start ILCC, which also helped. But one of the things I did before then, up to my socks, we'll go, well, that's an exaggeration, we'll go to the dry cleaners. You know, everything, dry cleaning. Now, that season, I just say, so we'll sit like this and say, no, this one, we'll wash this one at home. Let the washer man or washing machine do this. You know, and sometimes it comes to things like that at different levels for different people. And, it, and if I don't tell you, you won't know, I'm fine, I'm doing well. It's a season, it will pass. And that's what Boaz understood, that this will pass. And he prospered through it by implementing, by, by engaging in this economy. Praise the name of the Lord. Chapter number five. Chapter number five. Yeah, so another thing I noticed in number four, when he cut down personal luxury, uh, it, it reduced spending even in his organization. Uh, if you allow me, I can also see there uh, that um, he wasn't giving the staff feeding allowance. He cooked in bulk. Have you noticed know, everybody come and eat? So they all ate together. And what he was doing there, he was cutting costs and he was also building camaraderie. They were building friendship. They were bonding together. And it was cutting cost. And I told them in the first service that this is also the time that mothers, this is not the season when uh, you want to cook and then uh, Shade said, me, I want them, um, I, I want uh, a, a, Amala. This one said, I want beans. This one said, I want rice. No, what mommy cooks is what everybody will eat this season. Because you're also cooking in bulk and also buying in bulk. And, and, and if you buy in bulk, for example, you buy a carton of milk or five cartons of milk. And one milk equals to one naira in that carton now. But you've bought five and can last you for five months. If they increase the price of milk next week, next month to two naira, you know you've beaten against that. In fact, you can choose to even now go and sell your own and you make money. You guys, the way you're looking at me is like... Thank you, Shadi. It's good to have you back in church. Praise God. Chapter number five. Chapter five. Develop good negotiation skills. In times like this, you can discuss everything. You can haggle any price. You can call. So I can see Boaz calling. When he has done this with his staff, I can imagine him calling all his suppliers and saying, well, guys, uh, you know, cash is tight now. Can you guys uh, supply us this and we'll pay you over time or reduce that? In fact, we can't pay. Can you guys knock off the transportation cost on this product and just supply? And all of that, everything can be negotiated. Call your consultant. Call your, your suppliers and negotiate with them develop good negotiation skills where do i see that from if you look if you look at chapter four uh when boaz was going to take ruth to be his wife at the seat at the gate where the elders gathered go and read it and see his negotiation skills the first thing he did because actually he, was, he had no right to ruth he had no it was not the person that was supposed to have those things it was somebody else but it was what he did with that guy how he first pushed towards the guy a proposal that was not very favorable to the guy. So when the guy said, no, I don't want, I don't want. Say, if you don't want, Ruth also goes with that guy. Eh, ah, he has put the guy in a tight corner. He cannot come back to say, I want. He said, so if you don't take that, I'm also going to collect this one. Power of negotiation. Power of negotiation. My late pastor, he will tell us in America, in shop, he will go to a place. Price has been fixed on the thing. He will still tell them, can I get a 50% discount? Say, they'll be looking at you. Is something wrong with you? And sometimes he gets it. 
So I've learned that. So I've gone to some places and I asked for a discount. They said, no, it's fixed price. I said, can I speak to your guy or can I speak to the manager? Oh, call the manager now. Just call him first. And sometimes I've gotten 5% of the mark they put in the shop. And it's okay if I get 5%. I remember once we called our landlord and we said, Alaji, Alaji, ah, this ah. Ah, he said, first off, first off, first off, kai, 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 first off. And he knocked one million down. I'm telling you, brought one million down. Because just propose it, you know, no. Don't just always throw money at issues. You will run out of money because issue, no, they finish. Oh, <laughs> wahala, be like person where they ride bicycle. So use wisdom and negotiate and have good price and ask for discounts. They may call you names, it doesn't matter. Tell them you want it at a reduced price. Tell them to give you a longer payment plan or something like that. Just do all of those things and make it a bit comfortable for yourself because the people who want to do business, use that to your advantage. One day I'll talk about negotiation. you see that with Esau and Jacob, the power of negotiation. How one man bought his future by his ability to negotiate. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you following me? Okay, number, chapter number six. Chapter number six in the Boaz book of business. Focus on fast-moving products. Focus on fast-moving products. I, I believe that this was Boaz's master stroke. This was, this, was the, this was the final solution, the death blow, the coup de grace that he deployed. He invested in barley. Now, he was also doing wheat. If you check from the beginning, the Bible talks about wheat there. But the man divested and moved his investments into barley. B-A-R-L-E-Y. It was also a form of flour, but it was not as expensive as wheat. So the man moved. Why, why did he do that? Because he realized that in times of economic downturn and inflation, people are also not looking for luxury. They're trying to also cut down. So he looked for what will move in the market. What people will want. He went to the basic. At that point, he was thinking volume. Not just a price. Not just pricing alone. He was looking at volume. Sales, uh, sales volume. The number of people that will come to buy. Now, the thing with barley compared to wheat is that if you planted wheat in January and planted barley in January, for example, these are not the exact dates. If, 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 if wheat will be ripped in June, Barley will have been ripped in March, planted again, and ripped maybe in April, planted again. So it will do like twice or thrice before that. So he had a higher yield. He brought quicker returns. Uh, Elimelech thought, invest in this one. Don't invest in that one that will be on the shelf, 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 and then things are going. So he looked for something that will move markets, like Igbo people will say, the thing they move markets. So he looked for something like that, and he moved market. So he moved from selling to high-profile uh, clients. He moved to selling to people who just want to eat. Because barley was rich in carbohydrates more than uh, wheat. And when things are tough, and carbohydrate is where we get energy from, and you don't have money to eat food, uh, you go and eat carbohydrate because you want food that you can eat and go in the strength of that meal for 40 days and 40 nights. So he understood that and he invested in barley. Another thing with barley, and so Boaz came into all this conclusion by study, by prayer, by market survey. And that's what I am doing, that you think about what you are doing. Now, this will apply to your business in different areas. Another thing with barley is that it also will grow in a dry place and it was more resistant to heat. Now, we are talking about a famine. A time that it hadn't rained. If it had, if it had kept, you know, planting wheat, it would have suffered. But he found something that can also stand through the difficult times. That can resist the times. And that people will want. People will want. It created value. So, like I said in the first service, so maybe you're a fashion person. Let me use that again. Uh, you may want to begin to invest in minimalistic designs. That's something very simple because people may not be paying 70,000 naira for a dress again. Maybe they can do 30,000 naira. It's simple, it's stylish, it's cute, it's fine. It nicely combined colors and all of that. All those bedazzled, bejazzled, be bewitched, and all of that. People may not want it in times like this. So, study your client too and do minimalistic design. Actually, even in the world of art right now, minimalistic is what's trending. 
Minimalistic is trending. So make it simple and affordable. Another thing you can do, you can also drop your price. You say, oh, Pastor, you know, Nigerians don't like to drop price. But that may also give you an edge over people. So if the going rate for shawarma, for example, is... Uh, uh, and even times like this, by the way, shawarma may not be as good as just doing food because somebody will not spend 2005 on shawarma. He'll just he'll rather use it to buy rice and beans or akpu and, uh, and something. So, so those are the things that at different levels you think like that. And sometimes reduce the price a little. Makes you competitive versus this person that is selling it 7,000 naira, 5,000 naira. You move your own to 4,007. That 300 naira will mean something to people. It will direct them to you. Are you following me this morning? Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So reduce capital intensive, you know, businesses. Do something that moves. Something that won't cost you much money. The way the world is, you can even become a content creator on YouTube. And all you are paying for is just your data. I'm telling you. I, I, you know, some of you already have such gifts. You can stay in front of the camera and be crazy. And the world is looking for crazy. Before you know it, you have um, 100,000 followers and likes on, and YouTube begins to pay you. And without, you are not spending so much. Look at people like Sabinos. How much are they paying? And some of them, have you seen those children that dance? I don't know which country they are from. Uganda. You see, are you seeing them? And you could just tell his phone. They are using to just move to do things. And the world and YouTube is paying them. Some of them are making monies that you will not make in a month, in a week. So think of things like that. Some of you in your neighborhood, and I, like I said, I'm going to talk about things later. Uh, and at different levels. So God will give me the wisdom because I also know that people are at different levels. But some of you, you can actually organize jump coaching. Why coaching? Coach children in math. I was joking with Pastor Uruaga. If somebody just says in this church that during second service, I'll be teaching children languages, Swahili, Yoruba language. You know, some parents will not mind. 500 naira a Sunday. By the time you gather 10 children, that's 5,000 every Sunday. It's something. And it's your natural language. You are not, um, you are not fabricating anything. It's the Yoruba, Bini Bini is inside of you. You just pour it out and get 5,000 naira for it. You know, so there are just different things that you can begin to do and begin to walk your way upward. Praise God. Chapter number seven, maintain generosity. It's important. It's important in times like this, still look for ways to do good. Times like this, the natural thing is to want to be selfish, to want to hold back, to want to keep back, you know, but generosity is a biblical key for prosperity. So give to God, give to man, be kind. You see Boaz in that place, the Bible says he was intentional in being a blessing. He said, let sheaves purposely be dropped for her. Let sheaves, and every time, if you read the story further, every time she was going on, she would give her something for her mother-in-law. Every time, take this, take this, take this. No wonder God blessed the man. The Bible says there is one who withholds. It leads to, well, there is one who scatters and he prospers. But there is one who withholds more than is necessary and it leads to poverty. So in times like this, still be generous. Still be kind. Still be friendly. Still smile. Give a smile. Give a hug. Give a word of blessing. Give a dress. Go to your wardrobe. Give somebody a dress. Give a shoe. Walk your way out of prosperity, out of a poverty. I like to say your seed is your way out of your need. So begin with something you have. The prophet said to that woman, what do you have in your house? You have something with you and you can begin from there. And lastly, the last chapter, chapter 8. As Boaz begins to close the book, Solomon said, we have seen the conclusion of the matter. Fear God. So the conclusion of the book, Boaz says, have faith in God. Faith in God. Faith in God. Boaz must have trusted God and kept faith alive. Because I don't know how you will be in a place, all your colleagues are leaving the country, they are closing their businesses, they are saying it's not good, all the consultants, nephrologists have left, uh, and all, the, all of them are leaving, and, and you are the only person around. It must have taken some faith. It must have taken some belief that I will, David said, I think it's um, maybe 27, 13, I think. He said, I will have lost hope had I not believed that I will see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. The man had faith. He believed that in that place, God will still prosper him. 
that prosperity does not come from the east, west, or south. It comes from the Lord. He said, I am the God who gives you the power to get wealth. No wonder the Bible says, they that know their God, they shall prosper and they will carry out great exploits. So the man invested in his faith life. I can imagine him speaking to his fans. I can imagine him encouraging himself, saying, Boaz, don't worry, you will make it. You will make it. You may be in this place. Everybody may have given up, but you will prosper. Your God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He will look at the street and say, kids, don't worry. None of you will drop out of school. We will go through this season together. God will supply our need. Our God is good to us. All things are working together for our good. You, he kept the switch of faith turned on con continually. Continually. For him to have waded through that season. Because like I said in the first service, how could he have been in a place of famine and be investing there unless he had the kind of faith that Isaac had? The Bible says, in that land of famine... Isaac planted and he reaped a hundredfold and he began to prosper, continued to prosper until he became very prosperous. It takes faith in God to do that. Children of God, faith in God. Get into the word of God because faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Many of us are too busy now to stay in the Word. And in the place of studying the Word, an idea will explode in your spirit. Or even if you don't get anything directly from there, your spirit is open to hear from the Holy Spirit. And then an idea is dropped in your heart. And something just tells you, you will be fine. And that happens by spending time with God in His Word. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Now, if you're an employee, I may not have spoken much, but your barley, not wheat now, your, your wheat can be your job. Your barley can be your side hustle. Look for something you can also do on the side. And like I said, it can be this content create, creation. When you close, just go on, on Instagram or YouTube or any of those things. Find a niche, like they say, a USP, a unique selling point, something you want to do. You know, that is unique. There was one I saw, ah, there was one I saw recently and I thought it was a good idea. Ah, what was this guy doing? And I'd not seen anybody doing it. I felt it was a good idea. I can't remember. I, I just watched it some days ago. You know, and it was a different thing. And of course, some of you may have seen that guy that says, Hello, you've come, welcome to uh, Heaven's, you know, uh, call, phone, phone some call center. You know, I'll be checking up. And the guy is doing like a professional, you know, call center person. But he's doing Bible things. And you will see the number of likes. You know what? They get paid for those things. They're getting paid for those things. And he's not spending money. He's just spending brain. Which many of us sometimes don't want to exert. So, find your barley in this season. Your side hustle. And lastly, become good at what you do. If you are working somewhere, become good at what you do. Invest in your excellence. Create a good name for yourself. Leave a sweet taste in people's mouth. When they encounter you, let them want to encounter you again. Let them keep thinking about you. Because of how good you are. Do you know that some of these people now that they said uh, the president just applied for 20 or whatever, got approval for 20 SAs. Some of those people, they've known them since. You know, there are some people, well, they still had their shop in neighborhood center. That faithful staff, as life lifts them up, they carry that person along. As life lifts them up, they carry that person along. Why? Because over the years, that person has proven their mettle. That person has made investments. They can see that this one is an excellent person. This one does not have a mediocre mindset. He wants to push himself. And sometimes instead of going to go and look for new people and submitting CVs and, and asking for CVs, you just carry such a person. Be good at what you do. Let's be on our feet.